Today, I want to talk about why I meditate. Hi, my friends. This is Casper, the Boy Diviner, here today, and thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Um, I thought I wanted to do a little series about why I meditate, how I meditate, um, any tips I have for meditation. And yeah, I really wanted to go into this for the longest time, but I never really felt like I was good enough at meditation to do something like this. But um, recently, I found out that even people on the path, you know, when we are meditating, it does help to hear from someone else about their experiences. It really helps because I did read a few articles recently that really uh, made me feel better about my meditation practice. and. Consequently, it has affected my meditation in a good way, like I've been feeling good about it. The first thing I want to clear up is what kind of meditation I do. Meditation um, has been a word that I feel has kind of been abused. I feel like um, there's meditation for everything right right now. Some people feel like meditation is about relaxing and falling asleep. Some people feel like um, meditation is to listen to messages that are not, uh, you know, coming from yourself, you know, hearing this and that or like concentrating on something and trying to get answer from it. I'm not saying that these are not meditation. I just want to go back to what um, the Buddha came up with when he talked about meditation all the way back then. And that's the sort of um, meditation practice I have. I've mentioned this book many times in my videos. Um, this is The Mind Illuminated and this is kind of my Bible for meditation and what I follow. So it starts off, and, and I'm still at that stage, but it starts off with um, Anapana. Anapana meditation is really about breath meditation, about understanding, um, observing the breath and seeing where it brings, where, where it goes and how it goes and what it feels like. Um, honestly, that is the meditation object, but while that's happening, um, simultaneously, you're supposed to use your peripheral awareness to really hear or observe the thoughts that arise. So that's the type of meditation I'm doing right now. I hope that makes it clear. I'm not focusing on colors. I'm not focusing on a certain question or a certain uh, idle object. Um, or nor am I trying to listen to those thoughts and gaining some sort of uh, messages from them. No, any kind of messages, messages that come through, I'm supposed to just observe it and let it go instead of following it. So when people say, you know, doing meditation, that this huge um, realization, what their life path is, um, it has never happened for me before, nor is that my um, goal for my meditation. Because when I talk about my meditation to people on the spiritual path or in witchcraft or uh, in the esoteric kind of nature, sometimes they are like, oh, you don't get messages from your meditation. Or they're kind of con condescending about that. I feel a bit annoyed because that's not what I'm doing meditation for. And I respect what you're doing meditation for. And I'm not going to comment. But yeah, we just have very different reasons for meditating. So you shouldn't impose your what you're looking for in your meditation on me. I don't do meditation for manifestation because I, I don't think that that's how it works. I don't think you should be doing that. Or like focusing on something that you want. Anyway, you know, no criticism. I don't want to make people, I don't want to judge people. Do what you want. Do what works for you. It just doesn't work for me. So my meditation today, I just want to cover why I do this sort of meditation, why I do anapana, why I, I, I'm trying to be more mindful and listen to my thoughts, okay? So I've written it down somewhere, let me... Okay, so why meditate? I have three big reasons here. So the first one, meditation. I think all Buddhists or all people on the Buddhism path or have explored Buddhism meditate because we want to attain nirvana, okay? I feel like that that is... A, um, the ultimate goal is to escape and <laughs> leave this cycle of suffering and really attain happiness. And even when you don't reach that level, you know, every single stage in the path does gain you that sort of uh, happiness in this difficult world where we're living in. Okay, And I, I'm doing this meditation just because I want to be happier in my life, you know, daily life. I'm the sort of person who gets angry about things, who gets emotionally annoyed with people. I'm really judgmental sometimes. I really feel so angry at people sometimes. So meditation really helps me, um, or it should help me. I'm not saying that it has because I don't feel like I've been too mindful about the changes that I've been through in the past few years while meditating. Uh, just to give you some insight, I've been meditating for the past maybe three years and I've gone through a 10-day Vipassana meditation a retreat as well. If you want to hear more about that, comment and let me know. So Nirvana is really one of the the aims of why I'm meditating and why people should meditate. Along the way, you will learn how to be happier in your day-to-day -day life. There is um, something called dependent origination that I feel like people should maybe do some research about because I am not an expert. I've been trying to find the, the sources that I've read this about but I can't find it before I'm making this video but I had to make this video anyway. So there are links in our lives, right? That, okay, so between the external stimuli 
and our end reaction being unhappy, there are links, there are stages, and there are links between from there to this. I don't know if I'm making much sense. Um, so, something arises. Our sense organs per perceive this. Okay, can we stop that? We can't stop that. When we perceive it, it goes into our mind, and our mind has a, a natural reaction to it, right? Um, a tendency, another thought arises, or some emotion arises. Can we stop that? We can't. But what we can do is cut that part between the emotion arising to the um, end thought or the end action, right? That's the, the part of the chain that can be cut. And meditation helps us do that because meditation makes us more aware that this is happening, makes us able to feel that emotion arising and being smart enough or being mindful enough to say, hey, okay, I'm going to observe this as it passes away because everything is temporary, right? Everything passes away. And we learn that also in meditation because we, we, when we feel pain in meditation, in our posture, we just feel it and let it be and it goes away. You know, even suffering will pass. Even happiness will pass, so we don't cling on it. Meditation is really about learning how not to cling on to these good feelings or be averse to the bad feelings. We are there to experience the full experience. Be appreciative of these emotions and th these feelings. And when we are appreciative, you know, overall you feel better. You don't feel bad. I want to feel better. I want to feel good. I want to not chase after happiness and not be averse to bad things and accept them as obstacles, accept them as a blessing. And I feel like right now my meditation has reached a level where, you know, before when I'm getting distracted, I'm like, ah, oh, there's another distraction. Now I don't. Now I feel, okay, I'm so lucky that I have another di distraction to actually observe and see how it works, you know. Oh, I got caught up by a distraction, huh? I And, and then I realized I did. So I'm doing good. I'm coming back. I'm coming back to my goal. And that should be an attitude when you're doing meditation. Uh, that's one of the tips I was going to talk about in the other video, so well, I will dig into that deeper when I actually do that video. The second reason for meditation is really better focus. I feel like um, I'm easily distracted by things. Meditation really forces you to be focused. It really forces you to try, not really forces, but really encourages you to keep a better focus on things. So when you want to do something, you know that the inertia, that the lack of that feeling of wanting to procrastinate because you're doing something difficult, um, doing work, doing something tough like content creation for example, which is really tough. Um, or you know you want to get better at something, there's a lot of inertia and I feel like meditation really helps reduce that inertia just because you know, you, you, you meditation is really all about telling yourself, I'm gonna do this and even if I get distracted, I can always come back, you know, I don't blame myself, there is no self-blame, there's no judgement, I'm gonna just try my best and I feel like the attitude in meditation really comes through to your real life as you do things, you know, like, oh, I got distracted, never mind, let me come back and do the thing I wanted to do instead of just saying, oh, I already wasted so much time, why do it now, I'll do it tomorrow instead, you know? That kind of attitude slowly fades away. That's the second reason, and it's really short, but I feel like it's a really good reason why people should actually look into meditation, especially Anapana, especially with the Mind Illuminated book, which really helped me on my meditation journey, as well as the Vipassana 10 days meditation course that I went. The third reason why I meditate is because I want to understand what my thoughts are like, um, the shapes of my thoughts, how my thoughts come into my mind, you know, how they arise and where they, where do they come from, how do they arise, how do they appear in my head, you know. Um, Buddhism believes that there is no self and when you feel like these thoughts coming to your mind, you realize that, you know, this might come independent of who you are, so there's no real self. Um, I think it's too deep to talk about this here, I don't really want to invite discussions below about this because I myself don't know enough to have a, to have a knowledgeable, uh, reasonable discussion about this or debate about this. But I think the main point is understanding where your thoughts come from is really helpful because I feel like um, in my magical practice, I, I do want to connect with my holy guardian angel, my holy demon, my agatho demon, my metat, whatever you want to call it, my furvashi. I want to connect to something else that is guiding me in my life and I won't be able to trust messages I get because I don't know if it's my imagination and I feel like meditation helps because I can recognize what is part of my imagination, what is part of my thoughts, what is me, what 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 are the shape of my, my thoughts and how they are like versus what a thought or a message from something else looks like, you know? It helps me differentiate that. I really admire people who are able to trust themselves 
and be like, oh yeah, I'm getting a message, you know, they're telling me this and that, um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I'm not that sort of person. Uh, no offense if you're that sort of person. I really admire you. I really feel like you have faith and you really trust yourself, which is great in some cases. But for me, I, I recognize the, the difficulty in the ego, the human ego. You know, because all of us want to be great, you know, at things we do. All of us want to, we have the tendency to to want to appear a certain way. I don't know. So I've been reading this book called Entering the Desert. And it really talks about the difficulty in recognizing what is your imagination, which is very susceptible. It's a trap. It's easier to fall in because you, you, want, to, you want to be powerful, right? You really want to get messages. And when a message comes, a message comes, you believe it because that's what you are looking for and that's what you want versus actually getting the messages from um, somewhere else. Okay, the book doesn't really talk too much so far about uh, how you're gonna differentiate that in your path but I feel like learning how to differentiate your thoughts versus messages from somewhere else is one of the key things I need to do first before I can safely say you know I'm channeling a message from somewhere else and therefore meditation here is really important it really helps me understand what is from me versus what is coming from somewhere else so the, the, these are three of the main reasons why I meditate there are more reasons there are so many things I can go into I felt like this this video might be a bit rambly but I'm going to try my best to cut it up and edit it so it appears coherent um, and I hope you enjoy having a glimpse into why I meditate uh, if you have any questions or if you have any reasons why you meditate and what kind of meditation you do I would really appreciate if you comment down below please leave a like and subscribe it will really help me out it will really make me understand what works in this channel and what doesn't. Uh, I hope this helped. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you, you guys have a great rest of the day. You take care. Bye.